Hello my friends, Hank here, and as you guys know, I mostly talk about World War II stuff on this channel, but lately I've been doing a little branching out into some more modern fighter jets and armored vehicles, and I realized that the various missiles we see in action with contemporary jet fighters are super interesting and very complicated, so today I wanted to do a little missiles for dummies basically to my World War II friends out there to help understand the different kinds of air-to-air -air missiles and what all these FOX codes mean that you hear everybody yelling about. AAMs explained. Let's go. Now, there are two main categories of air-to-air -air missiles, or AAMs, as we're going to call them from now on, and they're classified by their guidance systems. We have infrared-guided missiles and radar-guided missiles. And those FOX codes we hear in movies and video games, FOX 1, FOX 2, FOX 3, refer to different types of missiles in the NATO brevity code that are meant to be understood across services and friendly nations. We're going to start in the middle with FOX-2 because that's probably the easiest to understand and the most common missile you're going to see on most fighters. FOX-2 refers to Infrared Guided Missiles, or IR missiles. The most common one you'll see in Western service is the AIM-9 Sidewinder family. Infrared missiles are designed to be short-range air-to-air missiles, or SRAMs, and are often called dogfight missiles. These FOX-2s, SRAMs, are guided by infrared homing, which means they crave heat. When these are let off the chain, they are fire and forget missiles. They're going to chase after the hottest thing in front of them. Jet engines produce a lot of heat, so generally they're going to rip right after the enemy jet directly in front of the firing aircraft. But SRAMs are kind of dumb and can be easily distracted by other hot stuff, like the sun, for example. They also can't designate between friend and foe, so if a friendly fighter happens to be in front and closer to you than the enemy, you're probably going to have a bad day. That said, SRAMs tend to be small, nimble little things that are designed for closer encounters, sub-30 to 40 kilometer engagements, where IR radiation from a jet engine is hot enough to get picked up. Older, simpler SRAMs were rear aspect weapons, meaning you had to launch from behind a target to get a clean enough heat signature, whereas updated versions are all aspect, meaning that there's enough IR heat coming from all sides of the vehicle for these missiles to home in on the target. When you see a jet using flares as a defensive countermeasure in a movie or something, those flares are designed to trick SRAMs. Flares are hot, and they can sometimes throw an SRAM off the scent, so to speak. So SRAMs, our FOX 2s, I joke, are kind of like most guys. They're easily distracted, they have a short attention span, and they're attracted to hot things. Simple enough, right? Our other main category of AAMs are radar-guided missiles, our smart missiles that function at further engagement ranges beyond visual range. BVR, Beyond Visual Range Missiles. And there are two kinds of BVR AAMs. Semi-Active Radar Homing Missiles, or SARS, and Active Radar Homing Missiles. Our Semi-Active Homing Missiles, or SARS, are our FOX-1s. What Semi-Active means is that these missiles rely on a radar lock from the firing aircraft to find a target. The attacking aircraft will lock in on an enemy with radar, and when a FOX-1 is launched, it will continue to receive signals from the attacking aircraft to guide it to where it needs to be. The SAR itself does not have an independent radar system on board, it is fully reliant on the radar lock from the attacking aircraft to keep sending signals telling it where to go. The most common SARs that we'll hear are the AIM-7 Sparrow family, and these have a range of anywhere from 10 to 70 kilometers depending on the quality of the radar lock and other various conditions. The tricky bit with these SARs is that since they are reliant on a clear radar lock from attacking aircraft, if the radar gets confused, then the SAR is going to get hopelessly lost. Radar locks in this regard can be confused by other aircraft in the target area, by ground clutter, radar signals being bounced back from the ground, or enemy countermeasures like chaff. Chaff is basically just little bits of aluminum foil that can be dropped from an evading enemy to add a new radar bounce back element to attempt to trick an attacker's radar into thinking that the chaff is the target rather than the actual enemy aircraft. So our FOX 1s or our SARs, they're kind of like well-trained dogs. When they're getting solid commands from the boss, they know exactly where to go and what to do, but when they're on their own, they just kind of go kooky and mess around and do whatever they want. And our final missile type, or our FOX 3s, are what are called active radar homing missiles. These are the newest and arguably most effective missiles. Our most common example would be the AIM-120 AMRAAM, or Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air Missile. And a lot of acronyms here. Like their FOX-1 siblings, their BVR missile is effective to 70 or 90 kilometers, but unlike SARS, they have their own onboard radar systems. These guys are the smartest missiles, so to speak. Like our FOX-1s, these AMRAAMs do require a radar lock from the attacking aircraft, 
When they're launched at long ranges, they're going to use that radar lock from the attacking aircraft to get them into the right ballpark of the target aircraft. But once they're close enough to the target, that onboard radar system is going to kick in and do the rest of the work on its own. So our Fox 1s, the attacker has to stay flying towards the target with a radar lock the whole time. But with a Fox 3, once that missile has gotten to 20-30 kilometers, the attacking pilot can just get out of dodge and the AMRAM is going to rip right after the target on its own. These AMRAMs are also nasty at close range. If they're launched without a radar lock from the attacking aircraft, once they're off the chain, they're just going to lock onto the closest moving target and just zip right after it. So, to recap, our FOX-1s, those are our semi-active radar homing missiles, our SARS. These are our AIM-7 Sparrows. They need a constant radar lock from the attacking aircraft to get the job done. Our FOX-2s, our SRAMs, are our infrared missiles, our heat seekers. These are our AIM-9 Sidewinders. These are fire and forget missiles. Once they're off the chain, they hunt hot stuff. Simple enough. And our Fox 3s are our active radar homing missiles, our AMRAMs, or our AM 120s. These guys get help from the attacking aircraft radar lock until they get into the ballpark, and then they do the dirty work by themselves. It's kind of neat, no? So, there are obviously a million variations and nuances to how these things all work, but that's the basic nitty gritty overview. I hope that was a relatively helpful rundown of our basic AAM variants. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you guys aboard. And until next time, my friends, be well. Happy building. Cheers.